Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PPFF's Earth Week Storytime, the Friday edition. We hope you've enjoyed the stories as much as we've enjoyed reading them. Now, this is supposed to be our last, but you never know. I'm Pam Metzger, and as you can see down here below, I handle the membership stuff for PPFF. So the book I'm reading this afternoon is called Stella Luna. I picked the book for two reasons. The first reason is how can you not love a beautiful name like Stella Luna? It takes the old words for star and moon and mooshes them together. And it's kind of fun to say. The second reason I like this book so much is because I love bats. Now, maybe you're one of those people, I hope not, but maybe you are, who thinks that bats are creepy crawly and kind of scary. Well, I admit I used to think the same thing, but then a few years ago, I got to go to a weekend away and I spent the entire weekend learning about bats. I got to see them in caves, in bat boxes, flying out of an old church, and at a really large farm. So the farmer there told us that he didn't have to use as many chemicals on the things he was growing as he once did because he'd put bat boxes all around the edges of his fields. And every night the bats would come out and eat the insects that were trying to eat his corn. I thought that was pretty cool. I also learned that bats love to eat mosquitoes. And since I'm one of those people who is attacked by mosquitoes the minute I go outside, I figured that anything that was gonna come after the mosquitoes before they come after me is my friend. Now, the first thing you'll learn about Stella Luna is that she's a fruit bat. We don't have fruit bats here in Pennsylvania because they live in warm, wet, tropical places. And I don't think that's Pennsylvania. We have little brown bats and big brown bats and northern long-eared bats, but no fruit bats. If you want to know a little bit more about the kind of bats that we do have in Pennsylvania, I'll put some information in the comments at the end so you can check out and learn some more. But as for Stella Luna, she's a fruit bat, so she eats fruit and not bugs, like our Pennsylvania bats. But I love her anyway, and I hope you will too. Are you ready? Let's get started. So the first page for this is gonna be a little bit awkward because it's on the wrong side, but then we'll get situated. So, in a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. There she is. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. I think we're going to just get rid of that name down there. You know who I am now. There we go. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down, again she dropped. Flump! Stella Lula landed headfirst in a soft downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird was bringing. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop, and dropped a giant green grasshopper. Oh, bless her little heart. Stella Luna. Crooked. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, 
except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek, she cried, get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. She behaved as a good bird should. Can't seem to get it straight, can I? <laughs> All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mamba Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. There they go. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. <laughs> How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself, then no one will see how clumsy I am. <laughs> the next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we will get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey! A loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs. That makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat, I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. Maybe just one mosquito? But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna, Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree, and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. It does look like a pretty good mango, doesn't it? The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the, be they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. 
As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. There they are. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leapt from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Hi, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. She saved them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your fleet. On your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, and that's a fact. And that is the end. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you enjoyed story time, and I hope you'll join us again when we try and do this again. Thanks so much. Bye now.